the apparition of the Virgin Mary witnessed by Maximin Giraud and Melanie Calvat at La Salette on 19 September. 1846 has been one of the more controversial ecclesiastically approved private revelations, in part because there is so much misinformation regarding the content of the message imparted to the children. Some of this misinformation was propagated by Melanie herself in her later years, most infamously in an 1879 track that was placed on the index of prohibited books, yet still enjoys popularity among traditionalist publishers misled by the imprimatur of the Bishop of Lex. Those who have only casual knowledge of the story of La Salette, may easily mistake this extravagantly embellished apocalyptic narrative as the true content of the revelation, leading some to believe in a false apocalypse, while others understandably reject La Salette altogether as unworthy of belief. To correct these common misunderstandings of the message of La Salette, it is essential to return to the original accounts, in their various versions, and distinguish the primitive version from later embellishments. This has become possible for the first time in over a century, thanks to the rediscovery of the original secret submitted by the children directly to Pope Pius IX in 1851. We will compare these authentic secrets to other versions that appeared over the years, and explain the relationship of these to the originals, thereby constructing a documentary history of the revelations of La Salette. The Public Message the first part of the seer's account finds nearly universal agreement in all sources, as it does not pertain to the secret messages imparted to each child. These words of the apparition of the beautiful, weeping lady were recorded by ecclesiastical officials in 1847, and they appear in substantially the same form in Melanie's 1879 account, though embedded in a more detailed narrative. The public message of the Lady of La Salette was as follows, Come near, my children, be not afraid, I am here to tell you great news. If my people will not submit, I shall be forced to let fall the arm of my son. It is so strong, so heavy, that I can no longer withhold it. For how long a time do I suffer for you? If I would not have my son abandon you, I am compelled to pray to him without ceasing, and as to you, you take not heed of it. However much you pray, however much you do, you will never recompense the pains I have taken for you. Six days I have given you to labor, the seventh I have kept for myself, and they will not give it to me. It is this which makes the arm of my son so heavy. Those who drive the carts cannot swear without introducing the name of my son. These are the two things which makes the arm of my son so heavy. If the harvest is spoilt, it is all on your account. I gave you warning last year with the potatoes, pommes de thé, but you did not heed it. On the contrary, when you found the potatoes spoiled, you swore, you took the name of my son in vain. They will continue to decay, so that by Christmas there will be none left. The French term pommes de thé puzzled Melanie, since in Patois, the word for potatoes was truffes whereas pommes meant apple, exclusively. Ah, my children, do you not understand? Well, wait, I shall say it otherwise. The lady repeated her previous statement in Patois, and continued in the same dialect, if you have wheat, it is no good to sow it, all you sow the insects will eat, and what comes up will fall into dust when you thresh it. There will come a great famine. Before the famine comes, the children under seven years of age will be seized with trembling and will die in the hands of those who hold them, the others will do penance by the famine. The walnuts will become bad, and the grapes will rot. Here the beautiful lady addressed the children separately, confiding to each a secret. She spoke first to Maximin, and though the little shepherd did not perceive that her tone of voice had changed, Melanie at his side could not hear a word, though she still saw the beautiful lady's lips moving. Then came Melanie's turn to receive her secret under similar conditions. Both secrets were given in French. Again speaking in Patois, the lady continued, if they are converted, the stones and rocks will change into mounds of wheat, and the potatoes will be self-sown in the land. Do you say your prayers well, my children? Both answered, not very well, madam. Ah, my children, you must be sure to say them well in the morning and evening. When you cannot do better, say at least an hour father and a hail Mary. When you have time, say more. There are none who go to Mass except a few aged women. 
the rest work on Sunday all summer, then in the winter, when they know not what to do, they go to mass only to mock religion. During Lent, they go to the meat market like dogs. Have you never seen wheat that is spoilt, my children? No, madam, they replied. But you, my child, you must surely have seen some once when you were at the farm of coin with your father. The owner of the field told your father to go and see his ruined wheat. You went together. You took two or three ears of wheat into your hands and rubbed them, and they fell to dust. Then you continued home. When you were still half an hour's distance from Kor, your father gave you a piece of bread and said to you, Here, my child, eat some bread this year at least, I don't know who will eat any next year, if the wheat goes on like that. Confronted with such precise details, Maximin eagerly replied, Oh yes, madam, I remember now. Just at this moment I did not remember. Then the lady, again speaking French as the beginning of her discourse and when giving the secrets, said to them, Well, my children, you will make this known to all my people. The Lady of La Salette is obviously the Blessed Virgin Mary, as indicated by reference to her son, whose justice is delayed only by her intercession, to give opportunity for repentance among the irreligious French. The Blessed Virgin speaks a message of penance in agricultural language that peasant children can understand, that of famine and abundant harvest. If the people do not repent of their ways, there will be famine, but if they convert, there will be miraculous abundance. The great potato famine that plagued Europe the previous year was a warning and a call to penance that was ignored, so now the Blessed Virgin has appeared in person. The Blessed Virgin's use of French provides an occasion for the children to give evidence of the authenticity of the apparition, due to their limited understanding of that language. The secret messages were composed entirely in French. The threatened famine never occurred, as the apparition of La Salette became the occasion of a great movement in popular Catholic devotion, assisted by the endorsement of the Cure d'Ars and Pope Pius IX. This Catholic revival would be eclipsed by the even greater pilgrimages to Lourdes, after the apparitions of Our Lady there in 1858. Melanie's Secret Secret which the Blessed Virgin gave me on the mountain of La Salette on September 19, 1846. Melanie, I will say something to you which you will not say to anybody. The time of God's wrath has arrived. If, when you say to the people what I have said to you so far, and what I will still ask you to say, if, after that, they do not convert, if they do not do penance, and they do not cease working on Sunday, and if they continue to blaspheme the holy name of God, in a word, if the face of the earth does not change, God will be avenged against the people ungrateful and slave of the demon. My son will make his power manifest. Paris, this city soiled by all kinds of crimes, will perish infallibly. Marseilles will be destroyed in a little time. When these things arrive, the disorder will be complete on the earth, the world will be given up to its impious passions. The Pope will be persecuted from all sides, they will shoot at him, they will want to put him to death, but no one will be able to do it, the Vicar of God will triumph again this time. The priests and the sisters, and the true servants of my son will be persecuted, and several will die for the faith of Jesus Christ. A famine will reign at the same time. After all these will have arrived, many will recognize the hand of God on them, they will convert, and do penance for their sins. A great king will go up on the throne, and will reign a few years. Religion will re-flourish and spread all over the world, and there will be a great abundance, the world, glad not to be lacking nothing, will fall again in its disorders, will give up God, and will be prone to its criminal passions. Among God's ministers, and the spouses of Jesus Christ, there will be some who will go astray, and that will be the most terrible. Lastly, hell will reign on earth. It will be then that the Antichrist will be born of a sister, but woe to her. Many will believe in him, because he will claim to have come from heaven, woe to those who will believe in him. That time is not far away, twice fifty years will not go by. My child, you will not say what I have just said to you. You will not say it to anybody, you will not say if you must say it one day, you will not say what that it concerns. Finally you will say nothing anymore until I tell you to say it. I pray to our Holy Father the Pope to give me his holy blessing.
Melanie Mathieu, Shepherdess of La Salette, Grenoble, July 6, 1851.